Hey guys, Maz Jobrani here, just uh, relaxing on a couch, and uh, I was wondering, I wonder what my top 10 videos viewed on my YouTube channel were in the year 2017. So I thought to myself, hey, let me do a top 10 countdown. Like everybody else does, I'm gonna do a top 10 countdown. Now here's the catch. This video that's gonna have a compilation of my top 10 videos from 2017 will not be on this page for long. So share it, watch it, tell your friends, Watch it now, you can see it all in one sitting. Enjoy, coming in at number 10 from my comedy special, Brown and Friendly. It's called Iranian Names Translated. Let's go. Uh, actually, my wife and I were actually far away from a divorce. We actually uh, just had a baby boy five months ago. Baby boy. Thank you. I always feel weird when people clap for that because I'm not the first person to have ever achieved this. I feel when people clap, they're like, wow, Maz, how'd you do it? What happened? What'd you do? You know, I put my penis in her vagina. A little baby came out. I know some of the person like, vol. He said penis. I have to send an email tonight. Maz Jobrani says penis. Okay, fine. How about I say, I put my boot put in a reboot. And a little ha -da, da 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 came out, is that good? Is that cleaner for the Persians? But it's cool, man, we have an Iranian Indian kid in America. How cool is that, right? Yeah, kid's gonna get his ass kicked, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the key is you gotta give him a good name so that he doesn't get into trouble in America, and that's what we did, we gave him a good name. We named him Mujibar Muhammad Abdullah Rahim Osama Bin Laden, <laughs> Jobrani. Because I need the material, you know what I'm saying? i be like, son, how was your day at school? You were deported, fantastic. <laughs> Worked that into my act. <laughs> no, man. Mm. I'm just gonna let the kid know that he's Italian <laughs> till he's old enough to handle it. Because that's how Iranians and Middle Easterners have dealt with our Middle Easternness <laughs> for the past 40 years in America by pretending to be Italian. <laughs> like, I had a friend of mine in college, his name was Shadokh. <laughs> And he changed it to Tony. I was like, how'd you go from Shadok to Tony? I mean, Shadok to Sean, Shadok to Shane, Shadok to Shamu, that's fine. But Shadok to Tony? And what's funny is he would go back and forth depending on if there was women involved. If he was trying to pick up women, he'd be Italian. If it was just us hanging out, he could be Iranian. And like, I wouldn't know what's going on. I showed up at the cafe one time, like, hey, Shadok, how's it going? How's it going? Shh. Tony, Tony, Tony. There are girls, Tony, 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 Tony. And what's funny is he didn't speak any Italian, but what he would do, he'd speak Farsi with an Italian accent. I said, Hafejo, he chinago, he chinago. Kharagov. And the girls are like, wow, there's Chaz in Italian? That's kind of interesting. Why does he keep grabbing his crotch? Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, I got tired of laying down on the couch, so I'm just lounging on the couch. Uh, coming in at number nine is a video called Always Negotiate at Starbucks. Now, this one was inspired by a true story when I was in Italy with my Iranian aunt who kept taking me into stores and kept trying to negotiate at department stores, uh, clothing stores, and it was embarrassing, but it was based on truth. And then I just turned it into this bit. So coming in at number nine, always negotiate at Starbucks. Oh, I also got food poisoning in Morocco, okay? Here's some advice. Don't get food poisoning in a country where you don't know how to say food poisoning. Okay, because like I was saying, I speak very little Arabic, okay? And I took three years of high school French, they speak French there and I had food poisoning, I was trying to get medicine from the pharmacist. I thought maybe I could use my French to get the medicine. So I walked in, I said, bonjour. 
which is hello. I said, je, which is I have. Le food poisoning. He looked at me, he's like, huh? I go, je, la ham ham ham. He's like, huh? I go, je, la bleu. He goes, oh, le food poisoning, of course. You need the alka seltzer. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. Middle East, we love selling stuff. It's in the blood. I, we love to negotiate too. Oh my God. I forgot how much we love to negotiate until I had an aunt come from Iran to visit me in the US. I took her to a department store. We went to Macy's. She started negotiating in Macy's. Oh, it was so embarrassing. She brought her dresses to the counter. She goes, okay, how much for my discount? The guy goes, no, no, ma'am, we're not having a sale. No, but for me, what is it this? The guy goes, ma'am, this is Macy's. I'm not Macy, I can't do this. She goes, don't worry, I take off a button. You say it's damaged, give me this one. Yeah. She was so persistent after a half an hour, the guy's, the guy's like, screw it, take my employee discount, get the hell out of here. We don't do that. I grew I forgot. We don't do that in the West. But like in America, you, you don't walk in here even. You don't walk into like Starbucks and negotiate. What was the last time you wanted? Give me, give me a Frappuccino. That'll be $3. I'll give you $1. <laughs> Sir, it's a Frappuccino. $1.50. <laughs> so this is Starbucks. $1.75, final offer. I will go to another coffee shop, see what they have to offer. I will be back. Yeah, yeah. Eugene, by the way, that's the key to negotiating. You gotta pretend like you have better options elsewhere than you have a good deal. That's why uh, Middle Eastern men were allowed four wives. <laughs> you can negotiate them against each other, yeah. Yeah. But like, oh, you're not giving me a blowjob? I see what she has to offer. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> I love to negotiate, man. Well, I got uh, tired of lounging on the couch, so now I'm standing uh, at a white wall. Uh, coming in at number eight is a clip I call Don't Buy Anything from Middle Easterners. This was about the time when I bought rugs in Morocco. Now, Morocco is actually in Africa, but uh, I meant don't buy anything from people uh, from my background, Iranians, Arabs, Moroccans, just people from that part of the world. Not in a bad way. I didn't mean to insult anybody. I just think they're very good businessmen. And uh, the guy sold me rugs in Morocco. I didn't have a place to put them. I didn't want the rugs, but I bought the rugs. That's how good they are. It's actually a compliment to salesmanship from that part of the world. So coming to number eight, don't buy anything from Middle Easterners. Enjoy. Middle Easterners, we love selling stuff, man. Eugene, you ever try to buy anything from a Middle Easterner before? Okay, here's my, here's my tip to my uh, friends that have never hung out with Middle Easterners, never tried to buy anything from us. Here's a tip. If you're ever in a deal situation with a Middle Easterner, if they say, my friend, <laughs> you're about to get screwed. Okay? They are not your friend. Because Eugene, I actually fell for this one time because I grew up in America. I forgot about the whole my friend rule. I was in Morocco, I was visiting Morocco, and um, uh, I was walking, at the time, I was just out of college, living with my mom, so I had like, I had a little room. I had nowhere to even put a rug, so I should not be going into a rug store. But I'm walking by the Moroccan guy, my friend, my friend. He's at the rug store, my friend. And I was like, me? Oh yeah, my friend, my friend, my, come on. I was like, he's so nice, he's my friend. I went there, Eugene, they give you free stuff. He goes, have a seat, here. have minty, have some minty. Started giving me free mint tea. I was like, wow, this is so nice. We're friends, he's giving me tea. Then a little time goes by, he goes, my friend, today's a beautiful day. My friend, which 10 rugs would you like to buy? I go, no, man, I live at home. I got nowhere to put a rug. I'm okay. He goes, my friend, relax, have some mint tea. Shh. <laughs> my friend, which three? Take three rugs, just go. I go, no, I can't. I, I don't have a place to go. My, shh. Mint tea, relax. Then he goes, my friend, look at my kids. They have to eat. <laughs> Buy the rugs. <laughs> Eugene, I bought three rugs. I had nowhere to put them. <laughs> For six months, I drove around Los Angeles with three rugs in the trunk of my car. <laughs> trying to sell them to relatives. Every party. My friend, my friend. Come here, my friend.
have some mint tea, glove compartment, mint tea. Mint tea. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip, and I hope you're enjoying this countdown. Um, as I was doing the countdown, I thought to myself, I wonder what the back of my head looks like. So I decided to do this next uh, uh, video intro in front of a mirror. And there is the back of my head right there. Uh, it's kind of weird to point at It's actually right there, but it's there. Isn't that neat how you can do that? That's always, I think I did a pretty good job with the shaving of my head. I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I'm getting good at it. Uh, this next... A clip is from my special called I Come in Peace, which was filmed in Stockholm, Sweden. Those people are amazing. The crowds are amazing. I had a great time in Stockholm, Sweden. This one's called Middle Easterners Love to Dance because we really do. We love dancing. They don't show enough of us dancing on television. So I think they should start showing Iranians and other people from that part of the world, Arabs, uh, Muslims in general, dancing. So let's, let's take a look at this one. Middle Easterners love to dance. Eugene, you notice how they all started clapping right there? You see how they all started clapping? See, we love, we love to celebrate life. We love to dance. We love to, a lot of people in the West don't know the people from that part of the world, Middle East, like to dance and laugh and celebrate. I saw, when I did the Axie Evil Comedy Tour, it came out on Comedy Central. I went online to see what people were saying about it. I ended up on the Sean Hannity website. It's a conservative website. One guy wrote another guy. He said, I never knew these people laughed. Because think about it, you never see, you know, Middle Easterners laughing in American film or television, right? Maybe like an evil, like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I will kill you in the name of Allah. Whoa. <laughs> but never like, ha, 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 We love to laugh. We love to dance. Oh, my God. You saw, they just started clapping. If wherever we are, if we hear clapping, we, f we have to dance. We could be on an airplane and the pilot has said, everyone fasten, we're about to land. Someone starts clapping, I have to dance, I can't. He's clapping. <laughs> Try it, next time you're landing, just start clapping. Some Middle Eastern guy will get up. <laughs> we love to dance. The US said they wanted to win the hearts and minds in the Middle East, so we attacked. We shouldn't have attacked. We should have sent over clapping troops. <laughs> Just put them anywhere, there's any trouble, have them start clapping, the fighting will stop. <laughs> Sunnis and Shiites killing each other in Iraq, just go and clap, it'll stop. They'll be fighting, fighting, they hear the clapping. Uh, I have to dance, I kill you later, I kill you later. <laughs> I'm dancing, I can't kill you right now. I'm dancing. I'm... Next week, I call you, then I kill you. I call you, you make it. <laughs> it's in the blood. Eugene, you ever been to one of our parties? You ever been to the Persian party? Okay, here's my advice to my, my, uh, my Swedish friends, my friends, my white friends. Oh, you, if, you've never, if you've never been to a Persian party, here's the advice. If you ever go and you don't want to dance, get out of the room. Because <laughs> they will track you down. You could be hanging out in the corner and be like, oh, look, the Persians are dancing. Whatever, I'm just gonna hang out, have a pistachio, relax. <laughs> look over at Eugene, Eugene, come on, Eugene, come on, come on. <laughs> like, no, I don't feel like it. Eugene, Eugene, I don't feel. And then they start a chant, which basically translates to Eugene must dance. Eugene must dance. Yeah, they go, Eugene Bayad Belakse. Eugene Bayad Belakse. Eugene ba Yeah, you see that? You see that? You see that? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make a point, they want you to dance right now. That's how great, there, there you go, there you go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, there you go. Look, beautiful, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yes. That's how we roll. Did you see, he, he, in the, his, with the clapping, you said you never danced, but you were dancing Persian. <laughs> in the rhythm, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> it's fun, man. We celebrate life. And it's not just us, the Arabs too. The Arabs, you guys celebrate too. If you ever, listen, if you ever go party with the Arabs, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna rest your hands for like a month before you go. Because <laughs> the rest of the world, they clap like this, okay? The Arabs, they take all those years of fighting and oppression, <laughs> being in the sun. Eugene, ready, ready, Habibi? Yeah, 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 yalla, 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 yalla.
and you're gonna try and keep up, you'll be like, ow, this shit hurts, man. <laughs> How long is this song? <laughs> Till the sun comes up, Eugene. Till the sun comes up. All right, coming in at number six with my daughter and Dara in the background. Guys, what's at number six? Say number six. Number six. Is when Indians are mistaken for ISIS from my special, I'm not a terrorist, but I played one on TV. Bye. I, uh, I love having people together from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, but I, I feel like whenever uh, uh, I travel the world. I've traveled the world and I see people from the Middle East and I see Arabs and Muslims and Iranians and Indians and Pakistanis, all these people. They're mostly good people. 99% of the people that I meet are good people. And yet, whenever you look at the news, yeah, it's true. And yet, whenever you look at the news, like they show the one negative and then we all get, you know, we all get, because it, listen, it's in the news and people, people fall for it. I'm telling you, I thought that maybe it was just my mind, but this actually happened uh, a little while ago. I was, uh, uh, you know, we live in LA where it's very diverse, right? And, uh, and my son, uh, my son is half Indian, half Iranian. Our neighbor's kid, uh, half black, half white. And uh, the, the neighbor's uh, uh, kid, his cousin came to visit from Wisconsin. And he is not allowing a lot of diversity as much. So he came and uh, we, I took him to the movies and we were at the movies and I, we went to the bathroom to wash our hands. As we were washing our hands, this kid's six years old, uh, an, an Indian Sikh walked in with a turban and he started washing his hands and he walked out. And then the six-year-old kid from Wisconsin, his jaw dropped. He looked at me and goes, that dude was ISIS? <laughs> I go, what? He goes, he was ISIS. I go, no, he's not ISIS. He's Indian. He's an Indian Sikh. They wear turbans. I go, my son, who you've been playing with all weekend, he's half Indian. He's like, you're ISIS? <laughs> I'm like, no, my wife is Indian. She's ISIS. I go, you go back to Wisconsin. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> Well, that was fun. So I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Um, listen, if you have not already done so, make sure to subscribe to my page so you're the first to see all the new videos that come out. You can subscribe. Just click that button, subscribe, and it's free. So let's just keep moving, okay? By the way, I just wanted to show you a piece of art. This piece of art is something uh, that someone made, which is art, and then it's foam. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know if you can eat it. It would be great if you could eat it. If it were like whipped cream and you could eat it, that would be kind of cool. Uh, anyway, um, let's go ahead and do uh, clip number five is uh, people say stupid things on Twitter. Enjoy. No, because it's still out there in the news. I'm telling you, like I watch the news. Whenever something happens, like, I, like when the Boston bombings happen, I was watching the news very closely to see how things were being depicted. And Because and, and, I've been in Boston a week before the Boston bombings. And when I first heard about the Boston bombings, it broke my heart. My first thought was that my heart went out to the victims. But then my second thought was just, please don't be Middle Eastern. Please don't be Middle Eastern. <laughs> and the news came out. They said they're Chechnya. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and then they go, but they're Muslim. I was like, shit. <laughs> but I don't know if you guys remember or not, but um, as soon as it was revealed that the bombers were Chechnya, and we have a lot of stupid people that are on social media nowadays, okay? And as soon as, as soon as it was revealed that the bombers were Chechnyan, people went on Twitter and they started tweeting that we should attack the Czech Republic. <laughs> it's the wrong country. But well, people are so dumb. Get the goddamn Czechs, goddammit. <laughs> Never liked the Czechs. Or Czechers for that matter. <laughs> or Czechs mix either. <laughs> How dumb do you have to be? If you're tweeting, that means you're on your phone or on your computer. Which means you can just move the mouse, baby. Move the mouse. Five inches. That's the difference between a smart racist and a dumb racist. Right there. Smart racist, dumb racist. Right? Just Google before you tweet. Google. Be that should be a tagline for Google. Google before you tweet. How dumb do you have? By the way, it was only two Chechnyans. That, does that doesn't mean you attack a whole country because two idiots from a country did something, okay? Like, I know we've done that kind of stuff in the past, but we really should stop. Right? People say a lot of stupid stuff on social media. Yes, I'm telling you. We got to look at the nuances, man. People say a lot of stupid stuff on social media, man. I wish there were an app online where you could just slap somebody. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Like a twit slap app? Right? Like a hand comes out of the phone, just slaps them in the face. I would pay $1,000 for the twit slap app. Just in the middle of the tweet. Get the goddamn <laughs> what I say. Oh, yo, yo, yo. That whole thing was crazy. The Boston bombings were crazy. 
Remember the, remember the, uh, the press conference that the Chechnyan uncle had? If you don't remember it, go home and YouTube it. Put Chechnyan uncle Boston bombing press conference. The most badass press conference I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay? I'll tell you something. If you guys have friends that are Chechnyan or Russian or Ukrainian, don't mess with those people, all right? Some of the most badass people. Anyone who talks like this, don't mess with them. <laughs> if they talk like this, there's a reason why they talk so slowly. They're thinking of way to kill you right now. <laughs> Google this press conference. It's the most badass press conference. The Chechen uncle, they killed one of the guys and they caught the other guy. And the reporter asked him, he goes, how do you feel about your nephews being the bombers? And the uncle just, loser, 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 loser. The reporter goes, can you elaborate? Loser, 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 loser. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, the guy was the guy, the subtext was just let that one kid go, I'm going to kill him myself. Because he disgraced the family name. We all know if we're like an American dude, he would have been up there with like a lawyer, right? But how do I feel about my nephews being the bombers? Hold on one second. How do we feel about my nephews being the bombers? Uh, no further comment. Thank you for coming. Thank you. As we have coffees and bagels on the way out. Thank you very much. Not the Chechnyans. Chechnyans, loser, 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 loser. Loser, lawyer, you're a loser too. Stand back. I kill, I kill, kill, kill. <laughs> the most badass press conference ever. The whole thing was crazy. I was watching the news. I don't know if you guys remember this, but before they found out that the bombers were the two Chechnyan dudes, the New York Post, which is a conservative newspaper, took a picture of two Moroccan dudes who happened to be at the finish line wearing backpacks. They put it on their cover. They said, these are the guys. They weren't the guys, but the New York Post was like, hey, two Arabs in backpacks, gotta be the guys. <laughs> conservative paper. I felt so bad for those two guys. First of all, I wonder how they ended up down there in the first place. I wonder if like the night before one guy called the other guy, hey, Muhammad, let's go down to the finish line. We have a picnic. Bring your backpack. <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah, bring some fertilizers. We can plant some flowers. <laughs> Those two guys are traumatized. Yeah, yeah, Mo, they, they'll never wear backpacks ever again. The next time someone calls the guy, hey, Muhammad, let's go. You wear a backpack. Bullshit, I'm not going to wear a backpack. <laughs> Muhammad, calm down. It's just a backpack. I'm not going to wear a backpack. <laughs> Muhammad, we're going skydiving. You have to wear. I'm bullshit. I dive with the backpack. <laughs> I bring my fanny pack. I dive. <laughs> I just take my fanny pack off. I say, Muhammad. <laughs> if Allah wants me to land, I land. If not, I die. Wallahi. Wallahi. <laughs> oh. The whole thing was crazy. Don't know if you heard about this, but before they found out that the bombers were the Chechnyans, there was two Saudis the day after the Boston bombings, two Saudis leaving the Boston airport. They got on an airplane speaking Arabic to one another loudly as they walked down the aisle. The passengers overheard them and kicked them off the plane. Yeah, the two Saudis just walking down the aisle just, I know that's not Arabic, but that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> Yeah, they're just walking down. And the passengers were like, oh, hell no. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Mm, Mustafa's got to go. <laughs> now, as a Middle Eastern male, normally I'm offended by that. But the day after a bombing, I understand. Because if I'm on an airplane with my Arab friend the day after a bombing, we're walking down the aisles going, Halam, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. No halam, 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 halam. You've been watching the news. They're looking for us. We are persons of interest. We fit the profile. Go have a seat. Have a seat. Send me a tweet. I'll slap you. Halfway through the flight, he gets up. Hey, Mas, hala machala, hala machala. I don't know this hala machala, hala machala. <laughs> Go Yankees. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. Guys, thank you so much. Los Angeles, Will Turn. Thank you, my brother. All right. We're getting there. It's number four. This is exciting. I can't wait to see what number one is. Woo! Um, I think we need some music to go into number four. Here we go. Ready? Ooh, baby. 
Beethoven in the house. What's up? Coming at number four, ladies and gentlemen. Is one crazy Muslim, one crazy white guy. Enjoy. There's good people everywhere, man. All it takes is one person to mess it up for everybody. Like, I don't know if you guys remember this, a couple years ago in Times Square, there was a Pakistani guy who tried to blow up a car bomb in Times Square. Now, I happened to be there that night doing shows just a few blocks away. And a few months before that in Austin, Texas, there was a white guy who flew his plane into the IRS building in Austin, Texas. And I happened to be in Austin, Texas that day doing a show. Yeah. yeah. As a Middle Eastern male, when you start showing up around a lot of these activities, you start feeling guilty at one point. I was watching the news, I'm like, am I involved in this crap? I'm gonna get the memo, what's going on? But the difference is anytime a Middle Eastern or a Muslim does anything, a group will come out and tie themselves to that person and we all start getting profiled. Anytime a white guy does anything, no white group ties themselves to that person. When the white guy flew his plane to the IRS building in Austin, Texas, every white group came out. They're like, well, that is one crazy individual. <laughs> Even the tea party was like, he's not with us, he's not with us. Probably drinks coffee, that bastard. You might want to check the espresso party. When the Pakistani guy tried to blow up a car bomb in Times Square, the Pakistani Taliban came out and took credit for that failed car bombing. Why would you take credit for a failed car bombing? Why would you call a press conference and be like, uh, we just wanted to see. We tried. <laughs> and furthermore, it is the thought that counts. <laughs> and in conclusion, win some, lose some. <laughs> we always get tied with that, man. Like a few years ago, uh, there was a guy, the Christmas Day bomber, this Nigerian kid. His name was Farouk Abubabu Bubabu or Babobu, I don't know. <laughs> He just got convicted in the US and uh, he was this Nigerian kid and uh, he got tied to Al Qaeda. We all start getting profiled, but he was one crazy individual. They all are crazy individuals. You gotta be crazy, blow yourself up, kill innocent people. He was one crazy individual. I could prove it to you right now. Where did he put the bomb? Anyone remember where he put the bomb? Anyone remember? In his pants, thank you, ma'am. Very nice way of saying, in his underwear. It was actually in his underwear. Yeah, that was a very funny laugh. That was great. <laughs> The bomb was in his underwear. He was a crazy individual. Because any man in his right mind, no matter how committed to the cause, would question that one move. Just on the way out of the Al-Qaeda meeting, the Nigerian guy, whoa, whoa, I have one question. I've got one question, I've got one question. Yeah, I've got one question. Yeah, you say I'm going to blow myself up and go to heaven where there will be 72 vagins waiting for me. I think I will need my penis. Can we put the bomb anywhere but my penis? I like my penis. They actually say that they made the bomb look like his penis. They made it look like his anatomy because he was a black guy. Yeah, Al-Qaeda stereotyped. Someone in Al-Qaeda meeting was like, guys, come here, come here, come here, come here. You see the black guy? Okay, we take a bomb. A really long bomb. And two grenades. And we put in his underwear, he go right through. And it worked, it worked. Security is like, oh, he's a black guy, he's well hung. Let him go, let him go. <laughs> this happens three, four times a day. <laughs> you would have thought someone in security would have noticed something weird going on in his pants. I thought someone would be like, whoa, whoa, abu, wabu, furuku, abu, babu. Hold on one second. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, come here for a second. <laughs> is that a clock on his penis? <laughs> There's something ticking on his penis. <laughs> my penis is so big, I put a watch on my penis. <laughs> Time to go. 
All right, folks, we're moving right along. We're up to number three. This is my wine cellar. As you can see, I've got two wines. <laughs> That's the kind of collector I am. So coming in at number three, this was uh, from um, the uh, special I Come in Peace. This is a story of when I signed up my son when he was three years old to go to a basketball class, and the teachers ended up being Russians. Russians. And they were very nice, but they were also very tough. Therefore, this clip is called Russians are Badass. And watching me tape this right now is my daughter, who would like to say... Hi! Bye! Hi! That, bye! That, that's Mila. Enjoy number three. Russians are Badass. Now three and a half. I took them to a, uh, a basketball class in the U.S. First of all, every other kid there was five, six, older. They were all there with like tank tops, shorts, and were ready to play. My wife dressed our kid. Don't let your wife dress your kid for basketball class. He showed up in tight Mick Jagger jeans, a white t-shirt. He looked like John Travolta in Greece when he goes out for the track team. And these Russian coaches did not mess up. These, kids, these were kids. I, it felt like they were training them for the Olympics. I thought they were gonna like, you know, be, let's bounce the basketball, okay, let's sing some song. No, no, it wasn't that. They, oh, everybody hands up, drill, right, right, go right, go right. Up, down, up, down, pay attention, pay attention. And then afterwards, they gave stickers to the best players. Now listen, if it were an American coach, every player would get a sticker, not the Russians. After the game, they started going down the line. They go, sticker for you, sticker for you, no sticker for you. My son, didn't, he was his first time, he didn't get a sticker. He came crying, I didn't get a sticker. I go, don't worry, I'll talk to the coach, I'll get you. He came over, what's his problem? I go, my son, he didn't get, yeah, that's right. The next time you play better, he gets sticker. I was like, but he's three and a half. He goes, when I was three and a half, I was in prison in Siberia. I get stickered, I get stickered here, I get stickered here. <laughs> you want sticker? I go, no, we'll buy some on the way home, man, it's all right. <laughs> Russians are so badass, you guys had an enemy of the state living in London. Remember how you killed the enemy of the state in London? You remember? They used, yeah, poison, they used polonium poisoning. Radioactive material. Who kills someone with radioactive material? The crazy ass Russians, that's who? <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure normally you want to kill an enemy of the state, like you play with the brakes in the car, make it look like an accident, right? Wonder how that conversation went, right? Hey, Sergey, you would like him to play with brakes in car. He will crash into a tree, make it look like accident. No, Yuri. You take polonium. You stick up his ace. Then you take Russian flag, put on forehead. <laughs> when America calls, say, what happened? We say, we have no idea. <laughs> he must have slipped on some polonium. <laughs> happens all the time. All right, I thought for this next one, I'd come into the shower where they said the acoustics are better. So if you want to sing, you can sing in the shower. So I'm gonna sing this next one for you. We're down to number two. Here it comes, it's called My Indian father-in-law and my Guatemalan son. I said my Indian father-in-law and my Guatemalan son. Say what? Indian father-in-law and my Guatemalan son. What? Indian father law and my Guatemalan son. It's my Indian father law and my Guatemalan son. It's my Indian father law and my Guatemalan son. It's my Indian father law and my Guatemalan son. Enjoy number two. Oh my God. I love, I love having a mixed crowd, man. And like I was saying, I married an Indian woman and, uh, and, uh, woo. <laughs> yeah, man. It's funny because she grew up in, in America, so she doesn't do the harder, da 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 no accent, you know? My father-in-law has it. My, when, every time my father-in-law comes, hello, Maz, hello, Maz. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you, meet you, meet you, meet you. Is that a letter in your language? <laughs> Sounds like he's playing the Santur. Nice to meet you. <laughs> 
it's funny, we've met before, but every time he sees me, he says, nice to meet you. Again, I think that's a direct translation, you know, because I, I try to correct him. I go, sir, we've met before. And then he tries to cover up by acting poetic. He goes, yes, but every time I see you, it is like meeting you again. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. Hello, Mars, nice to meet you. <laughs> So I'm Iranian, my wife is Indian, our nanny is Guatemalan, our kids are confused. <laughs> they don't know who is who or what is what, I swear to God. Like they spend more time with the nanny than they do with us. Like I think that they think that the nanny is their mother, me and my wife are the nannies. <laughs> I swear, my son's three and a half now. Every night when the nanny's leaving, he's got a Guatemalan accent when he talks. <laughs> when he's leaving, adios mama. I'll see you later, man. I'm gonna hang out with the two losers again. Adios, mama. His name is Dara, which is a Persian name, Dara, but his Spanish is better than English. The other day I go, Dara, come here. He went the other way. I go, amigo, venga. He came. He's like, what you want, fool? What you want? And it's crazy because all the nannies in uh, where I live in LA, all the nannies are Latina. So all the kids speak Spanish now. White, black, Asian, all of them. I went to the park, there was a little white kid trying to get some water at the fountain. I wanted to help him. I go, hey kid, you, you want some water? He goes, agua. I go, water, agua. I go, water, agua. I go, okay, gangbanger, agua, take it easy. But here's what's crazy is the nannies were singing a song with the kids in Spanish and it was a call and response. So they would say something and the kids would respond in Spanish and I speak broken Spanish so I was able to understand every like 10th word. And I was standing on the side, they were singing, I was like, this sounds like a good song. You know, the nannies were like, orale, orale. And the, the kids were like, por que si, por que no? I was like, what a nice song. Until I heard the words, la revolucion. which means the revolution. I realize they're brainwashing our kids to help them take back California 15 years from now. I, know, I went up to the nanny, I'm like, what's this song about? Don't worry, senor, have some agua, relax. I have to talk to the soldiers, I mean children. Por que si, por que no. Okay, I'm back. I'm so excited I cannot hide it. I had to come to the closet so I could scream loud. I'm in my closet so I could scream loud. Look at all those clothes. Look at those shoes. Here we go. Are you ready? There's junk around here. I got all kinds of crap. Number one, most viewed clip on my YouTube channel, 2017 on the Maz Jorani YouTube channel. Tell your friends to subscribe. Feel free to share these clips with your friends because they're free. You can just share it with them. Number one on the most viewed clip in 2017 is why there are a billion Indians in the world. This is my theory. You watch it. Tell me if you agree. Bye and have a great new year. Who else do we have? Are there any, uh, any Pakistanis in the house? Pakistan? Well, thank you, one of you, great. God bless you. Every, listen, every Iranian here wants to thank you, Pakistan, because you guys are making so much trouble nowadays. <laughs> Whenever people ask me in the U.S., they go, hey, what's up with Iran? I go, I don't know, what's up with Pakistan? <laughs> Pass them right your way. Who else we got here, anyone else? Russian, Nazdorovia, you is, you'd kill us all right now with one finger. I got Indi Indian, I'm actually married to an Indian woman and uh, both our kids look like her. And I told her, I said, there's a reason why there's a billion Indians in the world. Yeah, your guys' genes are so dominant. Anyone sees with an Indian, the kids are coming out Indian. <laughs> Iranian, Indian, Indian. Black, Indian, Indian. Friend of mine, wife's not even Indian. She had Indian food one night, the kids came out Indian. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, chicken tikka masala does the job. <laughs> Just don't have curry before sex. <laughs> who, who else? What else do we have in the house? Where? Arabs, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 
question. Yalla, yalla. What, are you Arab? What, are you Arab? What? Oh, half Arab. Half Arab. Oh, yeah. What kind of half Arab are you? Huh? Algeria. Uh, Algeria? Yeah, yeah. Algerian. Fantastic. You guys speak French and Arabic. <laughs> Very good. I know a little bit of both. Okay. My Arabic always gets me in trouble. I know like three words. I know salam alaikum, which is hello. Alaikum salam is the response. Shawarma is a good food. <laughs> Gets me in trouble every time. I was in Egypt, and this one Egyptian guy, he goes, Salam Alaikum. I go, Alaikum Salam. He thought I spoke. He's like, Al I was like, uh, Shwarma? I don't know. Maybe you ask me what I want to eat. Oh my God, the Arab countries are going crazy right now, man. You know the Middle East is going crazy when Lebanon is the most peaceful place in the Middle East. Are you Lebanese? There you go. Salam alaikum, yalla, yalla, shwarma. <laughs> well, that's it. Top 10 videos of 2017 just for you. I uh, hope you have a great 2018. Uh, be good to people. Santa was watching the whole thing. Santa seemed to enjoy this, uh, this, these top 10 videos. And uh, hug somebody. Hug somebody. Be good to people. No reason not to be. Smile. Enjoy the holiday season. Keep laughing. I'm, I'm Moose. I'm Maz Jobrani, remembering my own name. Look, look, that's my head again. And that's a video of me doing this video. And it just keeps going in and in further and further. That's always weird, isn't it? Hmm. Happy New Year.